says, well, I'm not famous for our highly rated uh, classes. Um, when I was at Washington State in the Pac-10, you know, there was times where we finished 12th in recruiting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the highest I've ever been rated was fifth. The first year, our first year here, was a pretty good recruiting class because we had Marcus Thomas, you know, and he was a uh, parade All-American. Um, came in as a, as, a, as a running back, and so uh, that kind of probably gave us more points. But there's a there's a lot of points on this, uh, in three stars, four stars, how they rank it. But it doesn't. We don't look at that at all, to be honest with you. It's fun for fans, though, and creates interesting recruiting, and creates interesting college football. But I think it's the most balanced class we've had, Brett. You know, it's the most. Organize, and um, we're not going to change many of these guys' positions, you know. No, it's one of the most important things in college football today is um, keeping kids in your program, keeping them um, academically eligible, socially appropriate, and physically uh, better, and, and athletically better, you know, be, uh, playing. So that is the most important thing, and, and we do everything in our power here to keep kids in the program. I don't like kids leaving the program either of their free will or my my decision. I don't like that. If there's anything to drive me out of coaching, it's going to be that. So we we want to keep the players. Um, I want to keep all 22 of these guys in our program, and I want them to succeed. And I, and I think these guys, as far as their character and their development and their parents, have a good good start in that direction. Who could play next year? Um, I think a lot of these guys can play next year. Um, the corners will play, the safeties will play, the linebackers are going to have a chance to play. Uh, the running backs will probably play. I don't know how you can keep Franklin out of there if he can, if he'll tackle and can cover and, and block. Paul Franklin, the running back, because he's fit physically enough to play. Autry can use a little weight, a little weight gain at running back. But I'd say those that group of players are all going to be able to, to help us, and how they fit in, and how much they play, and you know, in special teams. So I'm looking forward to special teams because these guys, the DBs, are all of them are returners, kickoff and punt return guys, and they can cover and tackle in open space. We haven't decided yet. Uh, I alluded to Jake Larson because of a knee uh, injury. I, uh, and also, um, you know, I think he needs a little time to work. He only played four or five games a senior year with a bad knee. The other kid's a little bit bigger and stronger right now. Uh, Garrett Simpson, the quarterback. So Jake would, could be a natural gracier possibility. Um, Corey Cullicott. Uh, who's coming out of the knee injury would be another one. Um, but right now, I, I, we wouldn't have to grace her to anybody if we didn't want to. But, you know, Cullicott's real fast, and if he can come in and run at that, at that speed and size, then he'll, he could help us in a lot of different ways, too. So we haven't decided, but we've presented it as an option to some of the players. I don't quite understand your question, but um, what do I, could you kind of rephrase it? Well, it really depends, you know. Uh, in this state, this state's different than any place in the United States. 
because you have the top tier in coaching and athletic facilities, stadiums, coaching staffs, uh, players that play early in their career, Little League, you know, uh, Pop Warner, uh, Pee Wee football, all that kind of thing in major huge cities where you go into a stadium of 15 or 20,000 people and, and they got a staff, full-time staff, and these guys are coached up. They know how to play the game. And then there's also small little towns in rural Texas uh, that um, don't have that. Those kids don't have that opportunity and are just kind of like farm kids and uh, can will get so much better faster than the other kids that from these prime pro programs. So it's kind of a combination and a blend of the two. But um, um, you know, you're not going to pass up a big, tall kid that can run fast and will hit somebody. But then there's always a place for that. You know, like our tight ends. We got some. We got some tight ends that are six five, two hundred and fifty pounds, and are players. So that's why we, we got four of those, and we didn't. We didn't. We didn't get another one. I would have taken another one just because you can play a lot of different places. Does that kind of answer your question? Did you, uh, with the one-year contract, did you find it as a challenge to bring these kids in? Did they have questions regarding that? No, it's, it, surprisingly, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't a problem. It wasn't a negative thing in recruiting. Um, I'm sure coaches tried to use the fact that I got one year left on my contract, you know. But um, we just talked about it. and. But it was not a negative. It didn't uh, didn't create a problem for us. I don't think. I don't know what they see when the, when the door closes. You know. In terms of uh, the offensive line swapping out with uh, Connor and Diesel and Jack and coming in, how much that was an issue, or was it just at all? Well, you know, uh, Bob Conley's been here for a while, and and it was our second offensive line coach, and and uh, um, Brian was was coached here for two years as the tight end coach, actually as the tight end coach as a graduate assistant. So he coached on the field the whole time. He didn't really hold cards and do much of that. Uh, so he was treated more as a position coach and just done a wonderful job uh, out in uh, college football in Texas. So I think the transition was about as smooth as any transition that we've had. The interview process was tenuous disciplined and, uh, you know, hey, Brian, Conlon's leaving. Do you want the job? So it took about 10 seconds to, for him to, you know, he, he made his mind up quicker than that. But the whole conversation, yes, and asking, I think, was about a 10-second conversation. Did that work out well, then? Yeah. Oh, man, he's going to fit in like a glove. The recruits felt comfortable with that? Well, that, it, that, we had to do some hustling around. Recruiting-wise, we did. We actually did. I, mean, I got out and saw all the offensive linemen, and as soon as Brian, and, and as soon as we could get him hired, he was on the road recruiting for us and seeing offensive linemen. It wasn't, so it went by fast. And I had to go through the recruiting, the uh, interview process, like you do with most jobs, go out and bring four guys in, spend a lot of money flying them in, interviewing them on the weekends, taking four weeks to get it done. It would have killed us. But... Being, having Brian and knowing Brian, it was uh, a lot easier. Last, last year, you had a bunch of JUCOs. This year, none. Is that sort of when, when you do that one year, do you kind of want to go high school next year? Well, if we didn't really do it on purpose, um, and we really didn't do the, the junior college players on purpose, we just kind of lucked out last year, to be honest with you. Getting that many guys from Mount Sac that were that good of players with Lamas and Edwards, um, Frosty, and then our punter, you know, it, we were really fortunate because they're all good students and they're all good kids and they all uh, can, can contribute and throw uh, Robinson in there too. So um, we were just lucky because usually you're about 30% with junior college guys. 30% of them make it. And all these guys, we are around 100% with our JC guys. Yep, that, close that closes this class. Okay, you gotta give those to like walk-ons? No, that's just how many we, that's what we're down to, that's how many we have available. Is that because of the NCAA? Uh, uh, 
sure is part of it. It's meant a lot, you know, and the, the two kids from Maryland obviously didn't come and, and uh, neither did these two guys back here from Vegas and California, but it, we're still going to do it. We're still going to do the camps and we're going to maybe do them a little differently. We might have some night camps under the lights on a Friday night or a Saturday night in some of the areas. Um, it's very, it's just a huge competitive business now out there, uh, but ours is still the best and the least expensive in the state. Thanks. We talked way too long. I appreciate you being here.